What is up guys, Jager Wrenching here again. So, I don't know if you guys know, the past couple days have been really sick. The day that I made the video on my motor, picking that up. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll probably put a link up here to that. Go click that. Uh, yeah, I was feeling like crap. I had a virus. I still have a virus. I'm, st I'm finally feeling better. I went to the ER last night. It's been really nice to be able to get some medication and actually start feeling better. I felt like complete crap the day that I picked up that motor. That's partially why I didn't film so much. When I was at the shop picking it up, I just didn't feel good. I'm pretty good at hiding when I feel like crap because a lot of the times I feel like crap. So it's pretty often that I uh, just kind of push through the day and do that. Anyways, getting back on topic, what are we doing today, guys? Well, today I want to take apart this motor and I want to see... This is going to be... This is build series number one, by the way, guys. So this is the beginning of this build. We're going to start this right now. This is it guys. I'm kind of excited. We're going to start by, we're going to take this uh, coyote engine I got down here, this guy. Yeah, that right there. We're going to take that apart and uh, just have a look at it. Pull the crank out of it. Pull the pistons out of it. Um, we're also going to mark the pistons so that way we know where they are in correlation to the crank. I think we're going to do that. I may or may not because they're balanced. Um, they put them together and they balance the rotating assemblies. I don't really care that much to, how about this guys, screw that, we're just going to take it apart, I'm not even going to mark anything, we're going to blow it apart, we're going to take a little further inspection, I'm going to show you guys that, and then, uh, yeah, then we're going to get on with it. Let's go, we're, I'm going to just scoot this guy over here, uh, flip it over, I'm probably going to put a pair of gloves on, and let's get rocking. All right, now that we got it flipped over, you guys can see a little better in there. You can see the crank. You can see that's the bearing. That's the crank. There's a, a definite good amount of scoring on here. You can see this. There's a chunk of metal stuck on there from the bearing. I think these other ones are good because they have that little bit of movement. Usually if they have a little bit of movement like that, they're usually pretty good. You don't want them to have a lot of movement. You know, like side to side, a little side to side is okay. You don't want them to have a up and down, which none of these have up and down. Because up and down means the bearing's done that. It's been smushed. It's too thin. Um, but if it moves side to side pretty freely, pretty easily, but not up and down, that's a good sign. That means those are probably pretty good. Doing this for you guys. Doing it for you guys. I think for right now, we'll just leave it like this. I'm going to take these main caps off, and I'm going to mark them. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's go ahead and actually get that rolling. Grab your socket set. I don't know if this guy will take them off, but we'll see. Nope. Oh, I wish I had a half inch. I wish this was a six point, but it's a 12. We'll make it work. This is a technique that I'll use sometimes, guys. Ooh, that hurt my knee. Don't need your motor, guys. It hurts. If you didn't think it hurt, I need my motor so hard it tore my pants. There's a little hole in it. Oh, it hurts. All right, so trick I do, get it, get the wrench, put a little tension on it. Just so you guys know, the caps are numbered. One, two, three, four, and five. And so, they're labeled reading from the front of the motor to the back. Since I have this video, I'm not gonna mark them. The only thing that I may do is, I'm not even gonna mark these pistons. I'm just gonna take them out and stick them on their correlating sides. That way, I'll know where they go and maybe just stick them back on the crank. We'll see, I don't know yet. 
All right, guys, I'm still struggling with trying to get these dang main caps out, but I, I still, I need to take the rods out and spin it, but I wanted to get at least one main cap out. I'd like to get this one out, because if they lose oil pressure, the oil pump rides off of these, the crank, and you can see there's a flat spot right there, and there's another one over here, and that's what the oil pump rides on. So when this spins, that spins the oil pump, oil pressure goes from the block here all the way to the back, so if a main's gonna be bad, it's gonna be one of these ones because if you lose oil pressure or it drops, this is the last guy to get oiled. So these guys will see more pressure and pressure will drop as it goes across the back here. So typically I like to pull this main cap first just to look and see because if I see damage here, then I'm like, all right, how far did it go? You know, because sometimes you can have this one be good, this one be good, and then from here back is bad or you know what I mean? You can have just this one be bad and the rest of these be good. So it really just depends, but we're gonna pull this since this is up right now and these are the ones I just broke loose this rod end rod cap to see and she looks freaking beautiful can you guys see that look at that guys that is absolutely gorgeous so I'd, I'd rerun this bearing right here looks great crank Looks great, feels great, and you're like, well, you can't feel anything with your gloves. I can. I've been wearing gloves for a long time, guys. I can feel with them. And if you guys see the type of rod these are, if you look, it's all, like, broken looking. And they call them, uh, they're actually called cracked rods because that's literally what they do is they'll usually etch them or have a, a place set where they want to break it. And so they cast it as one piece, and then they lay it, and they'll have it, this piece like I said, broken off. And the reason they do that is they're actually stronger that way because all these micro grooves and cracks inside of here, um, when it goes back together, it fits in only one way. And on top of that, it just sits uh, so nicely. These little grooves and ridges give it stability so it won't slide side to side or do anything like that. So the camera will focus. Look at that, guys. Crank is absolutely gorgeous. Looks good. And that's a good sign because if this looks good, and like I said, the rest of these felt good, um, Hopefully it's just those guys. And this is where it's actual crank. This is where you can see there's still bearing material. So that bearing material is still in the crank. I don't know, we'll have to see what this ends up looking like, guys. But that doesn't look too good to me. Um, it doesn't feel that bad, though. It looks, honestly, a lot worse than it really is. So this side's not too bad. Um, we'll just have to see. I'm really freaking hungry, guys. I'm gonna have to get some food in me. But I wanted to see we could do that and I did when you do this too guys if you push your rods off your crank just be sure you don't bang them around on your crank you don't want that because you'll scratch it and that's not good and you'll see that in the bearing so it's best to get it while the cranks up like that and then shove them down and get them out of the way and once you start shoving them down you want to get them out of the way and out too because you don't want to be spinning your crank around and having your crank come back around and smack that rod in because it's sitting down there so as you guys can see I just pushed that bad boy out of there so the bearing on this side looks pretty good there's a little bit of wear but uh, nothing too crazy guys it honestly looks really really nice and that gold that you guys are seeing is just oil oh well, that's not bearing that's just oil you can see there's a couple little lines on there nothing too bad I would clean this up and put it back in and run it if it was a uh, if I was going to be reusing these, so not too bad. Pretty happy with that. Maybe we will end up running this this whole motor. It, it really just depends on this, so we'll see. Maybe I'll take it out, take it to the machinist, see what he says. If he's like, yeah, dude, I can clean this up and actually this will polish out, I'll be like, sweet. I'll have him do all that, which I highly doubt that'll polish out. If this won't polish out and he wants to turn the crank, um, I'm probably just going to get a whole rotating assembly, which includes crank, rods, and pistons. I'll go probably with a manly rotating assembly, and uh, we'll leave it stock block, manly rotating assembly. We'll bore it slightly over, just a very minimal amount. Uh, that way, all our pistons are at the proper um, piston to wall, cylinder wall clearance. We want that gap to be spot on, especially on a build that's going to make a lot of power. So I'll probably end up buying a set of pistons and uh, you know, having the machinist machine this block for that, if we can do that. Just a hair bigger, that way uh, 
like I said, it'll just clean up any any badness if there was anything bad in there, debris got pushed through or something or scratches on the cylinder walls. That looks beautiful as well, guys. Can't even turn this crank, guys. Like, it's really stiff. I tried sticking two bolts in these holes, like so, and trying to use my pry bar to spin the dang crank. And usually, you can get them to spin pretty easily. Ah, but that guy just does not want to spin, guys. I don't know what the heck the deal is. So, we'll end up seeing if this guy, like, the thrust bearing's bad or something. You should be able to put two bolts in it like that and have it spin, so we'll see. But I gotta go get some food, so let's go get some food. Got a little food in me. feel a little better, so let's get back into it and see what's up. Let me see if I can get this man cap out of here. So that main bearing actually looks really good. You can still see there's a laser etching mark in it. I don't know if you guys can see that right there in front of my finger it looks like a little battery it looks really good it's in really good shape so that's a good sign it works like this your oil pump sits your oil pump sits up here guys pumps oil into the block then through the block through the bearing it'll pump oil into the crank that's why the bearing has see that groove right there guys that's a groove that actually lets oil flow into the uh, crank right there and also when it passes over when this hole passes over the hole in the bearing on this side on the block side oil can get through um, So there's kind of two little ways and It's pretty cool But that's the only time that you actually get oil in between there is when this guy spins over that hole and Oil from the pump is then fed into the crank and then through the crank then it feeds the rods So but most of the time these are offset on the crank on the mains so that way that there's and the oil pressure will go all the way through the block like I said up through each main so it's almost always getting oil pressure because it's obviously spinning fast it's spinning so fast and one of these holes is going to be almost lined up or lined up at one point while this guy's spinning so it's going to feed and pressurize all of it and keep oil pressure relatively high so it works out pretty well but it's kind of crazy to think about it has to flow through that little hole into the crank then into uh, through the crank out these little holes so if you guys can see those little holes right there on the crank or here's better, you can see those. So that's kind of crazy, cool little thing. Now we should be able to, and I'm gonna leave these guys in because they're gonna help me. Check that out guys, you can see that main bearing starting to peel apart. And that's typically one thing you'll see when they start going bad guys, they'll be loose like this, they won't fit in. Because when bearings are new, most of the time you have to like this guy you have to kind of shove them in there into their home so they'll stay see how this guy's loose that's how you know if you pull your motor apart and you have a bearing that just floats like that that's not it's too small it doesn't go in there tightly you're gonna need bearings i would not reuse those bearings something's wrong there she is all taken apart this is basically a bare block guys although this is a thrust washer they have on the end so I don't know if you guys saw, the other one might be on the crank still. So Ford uses a thrust, this is a thrust washer and this was at the end back here. Like so, it sits like that. They usually have one in the center, but I guess Ford doesn't use a thrust washer in the center. You saw it was normal. Their thrust washer is at the rear here. So that's how they do it. You always gotta have one. That's it right here. That's that piece. Usually you have two though. Typically you'll have one here and one here. So I'll have to look and see what Ford spec is. Maybe they only have this one and that's the only one they require. But typically you have a washer. This same style washer would go right here. Pretty cool. This guy looks pretty good. You'll see the same type of wear. If this guy's worn, you'll see the same type of wear on him wearing off. So. All right guys, the only thing I have left is if I want to is pull these oil squirters out of here, the, each and every one of them. I think this one got dinged a little bit. Yeah, you can see it got hit when the piston was going around flopping and had too much slop. It came around and hit the actual squirter. I think it's okay, but uh, I may get a new one just because you can see there's a little piece of metal bent up there. It squirts oil out of there and these two lines. So it sprays on the underneath side of the pistons, which is pretty cool because it helps cool them down and keep them nice and also it just helps because it squirts oil on on the cylinders uh 
on top of that. So they're not relying only on the oil getting moved around in here and getting flopped around and slung up there. It actually sprays and so it sprays the cylinder and the piston, which I think is a good thing. And you can tell the pistons and walls look pretty good, but let's go ahead and flip it over and check them out. Would you guys look at that? It looks like a little mud bee or whatever they make those little mud huts. Looks like there might have been one there too, but that one's still there. That's one of those like, I think it's a bee that does that guys and it's a little mud hut they make and you can see it's got a little hole in the top of it. That's on the side of the uh, engine block, so that's pretty cool, huh? It's bee approved. Well, there it is guys. I appreciate you watching my video. Appreciate you guys uh, keeping up on this and I'll keep, I'm definitely gonna keep up with this. Now that it's a part, that was a big deal. I wanted to get that done, so we'll get it down to the machine shop, have them go through it. Tell me what I need and don't need, and then uh, that's going to determine what we're going to do. I'm 90% sure we're going to have to get the crank turned and use oversized bearings, which is something I don't want to do. If I'm going to do that, I might as well buy a sweet rotating assembly. So There's a guy that is selling a crank and rods uh, that I could you know, potentially use with my pistons, so... It's stock crank, stock rods, but uh, you guys let me know in the comments down below. If you guys want to see a stock 5.0, stock rod, stock piston, stock motor, try and make a thousand. Or if you guys want to see me buy a nice set of manly rods, pistons, crank, and uh, go through it and put some really good parts in this engine. You guys let me know what you want to see down below. And that's what, probably what we're going to do because uh, I want to make it entertaining for you guys. So... Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And go watch one of my other videos. It's going to be over here or over here. Or maybe down there. Or maybe down here. Now get the heck out of here.